Uh, Ahmed, thank you for going to Appledore, uh, your first time to the Theological University in Appledore, and then the, we had a, a fascinating day today talking about uh, communication. And now that you're here, I was I was wondering, could you tell me uh, about the challenges you face in doing religious studies in uh, the eastern part of Europe, and uh, if we can learn from that, and, and also maybe what role resilience can uh, play in that, because I don't know much about your situation and, and your field of research and your area. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, quite an experience uh, today. Um, coming to theological uh, university in Upper Dunlopfer, what years of working together on this project. Um, well, doing research uh, in religious studies in the Balkans is uh, quite uh, different from doing it in, let's say, Western Europe, uh, where uh, religious studies have been established as a research field for some time uh, now. Uh, most of the Balkans came out of the communist uh, era like 30 years ago, but obviously that is still impacting the, the how we do science, uh, especially sociology, as you can imagine, because it was hardly any sociology under the uh, socialist uh, regimes. Um, so if I were to uh, summarize I would say there are challenges that are macro challenges, uh, and they relate to the value that is assigned to science in general, to research in general, any research, especially in the circles of politicians, mm. decision makers. Unfortunately, there is still uh, the attitude to knowledge, to science and research is often, often uh, one that does not appreciate it. Uh, as much as it should be. And of course, from there uh, stands, uh, you know, little attention to research, research infrastructures and facilities and so on. So um, that's, that's one big issue. When we come to smaller, let's say, uh, issues, you have a number of uh, challenges. First of all, Balkan has, as you know, uh, uh, has been fragmented out of one country that was Yugoslavia. We have seven now. Uh, some of those are difficult to visit without, or almost impossible to visit or difficult to visit without visas. And uh, if you are Bosnian, you want to go to Kosovo to do any research or education program, you have to apply to for a visa and have to go to Zagreb. So before you go to south to Kosovo, five, six hours, you have to go five hours to Zagreb. And then, yeah, it costs, it takes time. Uh, so fragmentation is one, one issue. Lack of funding is everybody's problem, but we could compensate for that by bringing together, together uh, for the little resources and assets we have. Uh, yes, uh, our libraries and universities are probably too small for everyone to subscribe to big data mm -hmm. journals and, and so on, but we could probably, you know, bring our resources together. Now, I don't want just to talk about limitations. I also want to say that there are gems, if you like, in the region as well, both in terms of collections and in terms of expertise and people who are unfortunately not known because of the language barriers, because of the, you know, previous isolation and simply people, some barriers are actually mental. They are not anymore, neither, fun, they are not, neither financial nor, let's say, political or anything, but there are mental barriers. People uh, need to get used to travel, to communicate, to you know, all the habits, as you know, die hard. There were times when you were not supposed to yeah. rather than communicate and, and, and you know. So uh, there are other gems, both in terms of materials and experts, and we hope that resilience uh, will actually enable them, uh, offer them opportunities and uh, to, to get to be known by their colleagues from around uh, you. Yeah. 
Well, that, that's, it's fascinating. And how how different is it here? I mean, well, that was quite different. Your challenge. Yeah, because we see in our context, uh, I speak from the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, I don't need to uh, spend much energy on convincing uh, like government institutions or uh, founding institutions of the necessity of research and and the relevance of research. Uh, that step I do not have to take because that's what I learned from you. Um, we, I don't say we do not need money because we also always need money, but we are in a very wealthy position here in, in the Netherlands and also in, in the Tua. And we, have, we can do research, we can visit, we can make use of the Resilience Network. We have the wonderful uh, countries around us, like with the, the KU Leuven, which is uh, in Resilience with their massive collection with German institutions, Münster is just around the corner. So that, that is not so much a problem. For, for us, it is more a challenge to, uh, to make clear that religion is so special um, in its approach, in its effects on people, on society, on, on politics, on, on culture, that it is needed to have uh, a separate research infrastructure for religious studies. Not that religious uh, studies is more important, but it's, it is different. It does not, uh, and that is uh, for us a challenge. Uh, also, um, because while you were speaking, I was thinking uh, it's more than 30 years now that this wall has gone. And of course, that doesn't change in five years after that period. But 30 years is a long time when you still run into that. For, for me, there is also a mental barrier uh, I was brought up, and that's how I did my work, also as a researcher, in a divided Europe. So mentally, there is still, you know, if you go past Berlin by car, you enter some unknown territory, which is Eastern Europe. And one of the many gains for me of resilience is to discover this rich um, amount of sources in Eastern Europe. Um, for me, and it's not, I'm not saying that to please you because although I, I like to please you, but and meeting you as an Islamic and scholar and expert in Islamic studies, that opens for my research new perspectives to see it more in a European context, to see it more in a, a context of comparing religious uh, approaches. So the challenge for me is to make clear um, Religious studies needs its own research infrastructure, but also the challenge to conquer this mental barrier and to also have an eye and an ear for things in Eastern Europe are different than for Western Europe. And don't look with your Western European perspective on what's happening in Eastern Europe. Just be quiet. Don't ask many questions. Just listen and see, experience, and put it into practice. And I think resilience is a great help for that. Yeah, and I think added value of resilience would be, you know, there are some things, as we said, 30 years has been since the wall uh, collapsed and uh, 20 plus years since the wars in the Balkans ended. But, uh, and we colleagues, research community, we have been helping out each other and supporting each other. But the problem is it's it's almost individual, almost private mm-hmm. connections and networks. Uh, what I would uh, really like to see is that uh, what we do as individuals becomes institutionalized mm-hmm. so that we increase the capacity, our capacity to see, receive, uh, receive researchers, to help research, researchers when they try to do uh, their research in the, in the region. And... Uh, I must say I have some positive experiences prior to resilience and now during the resilience. Uh, see, yeah. people might be surprised that until about 10 years ago, when you spoke about Islam in Europe, even Muslim authors from Western Europe would completely ignore Muslims in Eastern Europe. Although there are more Muslims in Eastern Europe, including Russia, where I include yeah. Russia, than in Western in Western Europe, and of course they've been there for, for centuries. So, and uh, everybody needs pan, this pan-European research, research infrastructure, and I'm sure it's going to uh, 
influence not just our efficiency, uh, the way the, the how efficient we are in conducting our research, but also is going to add completely new dimension to how we see a religious scene in uh, in Europe. Yes, so, yeah. Oh, I'm happy to hear this, and uh, like we discussed today, there are many, many openings, many opportunities, many things to discuss, many things to learn from each other, and um, well, like I said, it's it's wonderful that you're at Apeldoorn. I've never been to Saturday U. Yeah. Although Saturday U is has been on the map, it's been in the, in the news. I've followed it all for many years, and uh, feel invited. Uh, we have already invited uh, several. And colleagues from the world because uh, we would like to have an outside assessment of the elements of research infrastructures that we have in the region because it's not always easy for us we need to compare mm -hmm. what we have and see how that fits into one big research infrastructure and i hope you will join the the colleagues and visit when they visit us to explore uh, and this, I think we need it before we make any co conclusions about what to do next. Yes. Well, wonderful. And you've come to upload, I've come to Sarajevo. Sure. Will we continue okay. this wonderful cooperation. I hope you and, and conversation. Okay. Thank you, Sarajevo. Thank you. Have a, enjoy your day and uh, have a safe trip uh, 